this afternoon that we could just get into the Word and study it and understand it and be able to appropriate by faith the promises of God. Holy Spirit, we ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to rest upon each and every one of us that we might be able to understand the word of the living God. For it is the word of God and not the mere word of man. And we want to thank you for that right now. And we just give you glory, we give you praise, and we magnify your name. Holy Spirit, have your way now. In Jesus' name, amen. The first scripture I want to put up on the board, and we're going to talk about learning to love ourselves. How many of you know we're all Christians here, as far as I know? So your old man has been crucified. So we don't have to worry about loving him. He was done away with in Christ. When Christ died, the old man died with him. That's a powerful thought. And every one of us have a brand new spirit inside of us. And that brand new spirit in us has not experienced the death of the first Adam. That's a powerful thought. That'll change some of our thinking, that we have a brand new spirit within us, and the Holy Spirit lives in that spirit. And the Bible says our spirit and his spirit becomes one. Isn't that amazing? I want you to see that. Your spirit, the new spirit, if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creature. What is new? His spirit. And so the Holy Spirit and your spirit have become one. That's a powerful thought. And you accept that by faith and you believe that by faith. Amen? So let's put that scripture on the board. <coughs> Romans chapter uh, 3, verse 24. You might read a scripture a hundred times or a thousand times, and a thousand times you read it, many times you'll get different revelations from it. So never say, well, I've read that before, or I know that. None of us know anything as we ought. The Bible tells us that. So every time we go through a scripture, we learn something. <clears throat> and what I want you to learn tonight, I want everybody to say, in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. Now, just hold that on the board. I'll give you a little example. What does it mean to be in Christ? Uh, in 1952, tw uh, February the 28th, I joined the Air Force. When I joined the Air Force, I was in the Air Force. Everybody see that? Where's Brother Bob? He's in the Air Force now. He's an airman. He's in the Air Force. Now, what that meant for me was <clears throat> I got all my hospitalization taken care of for me. <coughs> they gave me a brand new uh, uniform. It was a, a blue uniform. And did I look good? <laughs> they gave me cactus. They gave me three meals a day. And when I went in the Air Force, they gave me $79 a month. I had all kind of privileges because I was in the Air Force. I broke my left ankle. They put me in the uh, Navy hospital for three months and got it all healed up and fixed. They gave me shots. And if I'd have stayed in the Air Force, in 20 years I, I would have retired and had a salary coming in like Willie. He retired from the Navy. But here's what I knew. If I got out, I was going to get me a job in civil service. So I got out of the Air Force, and I'm no more in the Air Force, so none of the privileges, they didn't have to provide anything for me anymore other than I did become a veteran, and I get certain privileges for being a veteran, okay? But I got in Civil service. So I'm in civil service, and there were certain laws and certain agreements that if I stayed in civil service, 
and say for 30 years, and I was 55 years old with 30 years service, I could retire and get a check. I stayed in for, uh, till I got 55, and when I became 55, being in the service service, I had 36 years service, four years Air Force, federal service, and 32 years silver service. So being I was in silver service, I got that privilege to retire, and I've been getting a check for 26 years. It's fun. <laughs> now, I said all of that to get us to understand what it means by being in Christ. In Christ, we have many privileges. We have eternal life. We've been born again. God has become our Heavenly Father. Heaven will be our home. Our citizenship has been changed. Our citizenship is now in heaven. And on and on and on and on. We've been justified. We've been sanctified. We are being sanctified. All because we're in Christ. And we get all the privileges that when these bodies quit breathing, our spirit leaves and goes to be with the Lord. All of those are privileges by simply us being in Christ. All right, let's read our scripture. All are justified and made upright. Everybody say, God made me upright. God made me righteous. See, that's one of the privileges of being in Christ. You don't have to try to make yourself righteous. You don't have to try to become upright. When you're in Christ, you are upright. How many of you know he's holy? Now, if you're in a holy person, which is Christ, you're holy. Let me give you a little example. You see this piece of paper here? I'm going to fold it up. I'm going to put this in the Bible. Let's just say this is Christ, this is us. God puts us in Christ. And everything that belongs to Christ belongs to us. He has made us heir. He, he is the Son of God. We are the Son of God. We've been made sons of God. Now, we are not the Son of God, but we are sons of God. And God is our Heavenly Father. Listen to this. Because we're in Christ, God loves us just as much as he loves Jesus Christ. Now, how many knew that? How many didn't know that? All right. How many didn't know that God loves you as much as he loves his son, Jesus Christ? Everybody know it? I've got to see your hand. Everybody, raise your hand. So we all know that. And that's found in St. John 17. Now that's a powerful thought. Now we're talking about if God can love us as much as he loves his son, Jesus Christ, why can't we love ourselves? After all, we're brand new creations. See, we've got to block out that old Adam. We, 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 I can see many times, and I'm sure I've been guilty of it too, that we've magnified him more than we magnified Jesus. <laughs> Put our next scripture on the board, which is, I think is a very powerful scripture. That's uh, Romans 5, verse 18, I believe it is. 5, 18. All right, here we go. Well then, Paul is speaking. As one man's trespass, one man's false step, falling away, led to condemnation for all men. All right, and who was that one man? Adam. And we were descendants from Adam. All right, look what it says. So, everybody say, so? One man's act 
of righteousness leads to acquittal and right standing with God and life for all men. Now that's what Jesus has provided. Remember that scripture? Redemption has been provided by who? Jesus Christ. You can't work for it. You have to receive it by faith. And so he died for all men. He justified all men. He made all men righteous. Now, it does not become a reality to the individual until they do something. And that is they have to repent and they accept Christ as their personal Savior. Christ comes into their heart, causes their inner man to be born again, and then Christ is in us, and God puts us in Christ. And now we're in Christ, and Christ is in God. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3, I believe it is. That's powerful. So Christ is in us, we're in Christ. He's provided redemption for us. He, is, he has provided everything we need to live a godly life down here on this earth. Everything. All right? So let's read that. By the one man act, that was Jesus Christ. Now let's go down to the next verse, 19. Verse 19. For just as by one man's disobedience, we know that that one man is Adam, failing to hear heedlessness and carelessness, the many were constituted. Now, who were the many? We were. Remember, we were, okay, constituted sinners. Notice this. So by one man's obedience, the many, and who is the many? That's us now. will be constituted righteous, made acceptable to God, brought into right standing with him. Now, I've been talking about, we've been talking about looking at salvation from our viewpoint. And we need to continue to press in on that and learn all we can about that. But on the other hand, we want to see it from God's viewpoint. Okay? Now, how many remember the story of the prodigal son? And, of course, we've always looked at the prodigal son running away from the father. We didn't think too much about the father now. And so we tell the story about the prodigal son. How many knows the story about the prodigal son? Raise your hand. All right. How many knows the story about the father? A little bit. We haven't really concentrated on that too much, have we, in, in our preaching? Well, what about the father? Let me stop here for a moment. We think of salvation as all for us. And believe me, we need it. We're not knocking it, and I thank God for it, okay? But I'm just trying to stretch our minds a little bit. Do you think maybe us being saved might have been just a little bit for God the Father too? Think about it. The Bible says Christ died on the cross to bring us back to the Father. Because the Father loves us so much. God loves us so much. No, he didn't want us to go to hell. He, want, he wants us to come back to him. And so Christ died, yes, for our sins. The redemption was provided by Christ for us. But it was also to bring us back to the Father. Can we see that? Okay, and I can't share all the scriptures. I wish we had time, but I'm, I'm teaching scriptures now. So I want you to think about when people... When you witness, they need to know that the Father has paid a big price to redeem them back to the Father. Okay? Mm. 
we all have children. We all have people that we love. These people over there in uh, overseas there with that airplane that disappeared, because we all know a, a flying saucer got it, right? Okay. <laughs> I didn't get many smiles out of many of you. <laughs> just <laughs> sucked it right up. <laughs> they just found another flying saucer over there, did you? They found a flying saucer, but they can't find the airplane. <laughs> all right, scratch all that. <laughs> Those people, what would they do to get back their loved ones? Ain't many people moving in here. <laughs> what would you do to get back your loved ones? That's your loved ones, your sons and your daughters on that airplane. What would you do? How far would you go? Would you sell everything you got to get your loved ones back? Some of you are not even moving an eyeball. Would you give your life if that would bring them back home in safety? Because you see, no greater love that a man can have than for a man to lay down his life for a friend. For us not to love ourselves. When God has done all that he's done to bring us back to him, and we say, well, I don't love myself. Now, I've been guilty. In my, I have, in my periods of, periods of time in my Christian walk, you don't have to raise your hand, but I believe in being honest. A lot of my problems was I didn't love myself. If you want to raise your hand and, and you've experienced that, raise it. Let me see it. Be honest. Okay, we've got quite a few honest folks. Some of you are thinking about dinner, aren't you? Are you out there? <laughs> Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me put my hearing aid in. Maybe that's what my problem is. <laughs> I want you to see that picture. You've got to feel it. Not just intellectually grunt, but feel. What would you do if your loved ones were lost? What would you give to bring them back to you? Who said they'd give her a husband? Who was that? <laughs> Who said they'd give her a wife? Who was that? I'm trying to, I'm trying to get down to into the scriptures that we begin to sense and feel what God felt, what the prodigal son's father felt when he gave and told his son to go. Why did he tell him? Gave him his money and, and let him go. He knew. He knew. Only God could get through to that boy. And I've learned. Let him go. It hurts. But he got his son back. I've often thought about this, the father sitting on the porch. Thinking about his son. Rocking in that chair. The old rocking chair. And then he sees his son coming down the road. The father did not sit in that rocking chair. He got up and run down that road towards his son, threw his arms around him. And I imagine, how many has ever been around any hogs? I'm not talking about members in the family now. <coughs> <coughs> I, grew, <laughs> I used to like the smell of it. I really did. I was a kid, though. You know. Grandma would allow me to take the, the, the slop. How many knows what slop is? The dishwater, the soap, everything goes in the slop bucket. Everything. You throw up, <laughs> everything goes in the slop bucket. <laughs> I thought I'd wake some of you up. <clears throat> that 
boy stunk like hogs. He grabbed him right away. He was going to get him back up, gave him a new outfit, you know, brand new suit from belts. Fixed him up, put a ring on his finger, new shoes on him. And, I, and I've read the scripture. Surely that father got to bless that boy out on something. You know, are you reading me? You've read the story. I don't see nowhere in there. He said, son, do you know how much I've cried and wept? You have broken my heart. Nothing like that. How many has enough of Christ in you to be able to do that? That son stepped on his father's toes pretty heavy. I love gracious people. Are you listening? I love gracious people. That's my heavenly father. How many times we have stepped on God's toes? He didn't say nothing. We'd cry, we'd repent, and he would receive us back. It would be interesting just to see every one of us here, including me, the many times we've stepped on God's toes and broke his heart. And yet he would bring us back. Aren't you glad we serve a God like that? Oh, man, listen. If you live as long as I have, let me tell you something. If it wasn't for grace, you guys are out of here. I'm going to say that again. If it wasn't for grace, us guys are out of here. That's one thing I know. Are you there yet? Huh? Uh, if, if you're not there yet, you, you're going to get there because you realize it's because of God that has provided redemption for us that we're in his family. It is God from beginning to end. All the way God. Wow. Turn to 1 Corinthians 1.30. Boy, I tell you, see, the only thing we can do is praise Him. I mean, that's all I can do hardly anymore. I just, just got to praise Him. Let's put uh, 1 Corinthians 1.29 up there, Rick. Frank, <laughs> Rick went AWOL on me. <sighs> Here he comes. He's coming, um, Frank. I wish we had time to read all of this other because that gives you a good jest. But I want us to see tonight the goodness of God and that God put us in Christ. And because we're in Christ, we have all the blessings of God. It's amazing. That little statement, in Christ. And we're going to share a few more verses on that. I want to share this. with uh, 1 Corinthians 1, chapter 1, verse 29, 30, 31. We're going to start with 29. So that no mortal man should have pretense for glory in or boast in the presence of God. Now, what does that mean? That means it's all God. We ain't done nothing to earn anything. And we can't boast in his face and say, yeah, but you know, I did, or I did this, or I... Listen to this. Look at the next verse now. This is powerful. But it is from him, that is God the Father, that you have your life in the Air Force. We have our life in Christ. We have nothing to boast about it. 
God put us in Christ where he could bless us with all the blessings in heavenly places. That's why we preach the gospel to try to get people in Christ where God could spread and give them all their blessings that we have can be theirs, but we got to get them in Christ, get them saved. See, it's just more than having their sins forgiven. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. It is about that, too. But it's about getting them saved where they can get into Christ and get the redemption that's been provided by Christ and get all the other blessings that's been provided by Christ, eternal life, and all the blessings of God to be justified, sanctified, to be adopted into the family of God. But think about most of our preaching and understanding is to get them saved. I'm not fussing. I'm just trying to broaden our horizon to understand it's much more bigger than that. How many understand where I'm coming from? I'm broadening our thinking here. So when we talk with people, we need to let them know that it's more than them just, you know, this really goes along a lot with Charles's message. I thought he preached a good message. All of our people do. But you gain everything by being in Christ. Yeah, you lose some things. You lose guilt, shame, condemnation, hell. You lose a lot of things. But you gain so much by accepting Christ and letting God the Father put you in Christ. Now all the blessings in Christ Jesus are yes and amen. How many ever heard that before? You heard it? Well, good, good. In Christ, there is that covenant that God has made, and he swore by his name, which is no higher name on the, in the universe than his name. Powerful thought. In Christ Jesus, we are in Christ. Now, let's finish reading that. But it is from him, God the Father, that you have your life in Christ Jesus. Being that we are in Christ, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ has set us free from the law of sin and death. All you got to do is know that and thank Him for it. So start thanking God. Oh God, thank you that I'm in Christ. Thank you, Lord, all the blessings and all of the promises of, of, of God are in Christ in their mind. Now, look what the Scripture says. Remember, it says, that no mortal man should, should have any pretense for glory and, and boast in the presence of God because we ain't done nothing. All right? But it is from him, God the Father, that you have your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom, that is Christ. God made Christ our wisdom, our redemption, Reveal to us a knowledge of the divine plan of salvation, previously hidden, manifesting itself as our righteousness. Christ is our righteousness, thus making us upright and putting us in right standing with God and our consecration, making us pure and holy and our redemption, providing, providing, everybody say providing, our ransom, from eternal penalty for sin. Just look at it. Soak it up. Suck it in. Whew. But it is from who? God. If he had not done that, do you realize the future that we would have? Do you realize that if we have not accepted his plan... 
and said yes to him where he could put us in Christ, if we were outside of Christ right now and you would die, where would you go? Now think about it. But being that you're in Christ and it's because of him that you are in Christ, if God did not take the initiative to do it, all of us would say, I'll see you in hell. See, that's got to that's got to need to get deep into us. Because I tell you, I see it. <laughs> I see it. That's why I can smile and praise God. I see it. Because of the Lord. God Almighty. Now, I want you to think for a moment. I want to, let me give you this example. Susan, 14 years old, way up in Conway, boondocks. You, th this used to be boondocks. When I first moved out here, it was, uh, we said it was boondocks. You all never considered boondocks, did you? Did you just consider this boondocks? <laughs> you did? Boondocks. She lived in boondocks. Now think about it. But it is from him, God. God allowed a preacher to put up a tent. And a little girl working in the field, 14 years old, didn't even know she was lost. Didn't know the first Bible verse. She ends up in that tent. She looked at that and wondered, what is that out about? What's a tent meeting about? Curiosity. See, she didn't know it was really the Holy Spirit drawing her. God, but it is from God. God, God drew that little girl into that tent. And she saw a vision of Christ nailed to the cross, blood coming down on the sawdust. She runs up there. Nobody has even told her to confess Christ as her Lord and Savior and believe in her heart that God raised him from the dead. Boom, the Holy Spirit saves her, changes her tremendously, goes home and, and, and starts trying to get all of her family to get saved. Now think that through. In this big universe, God, if it were not for God, if it had not been for God doing that, now think of your own conversion. Think of your own conversion. An individual, there you are. You were caught up in the Muslim uh, religion, a cult, and God picked you out of there, put you in Christ. And you don't love yourself? If he loves you, <laughs> I've had to repent. I really did. Because we're really saying, God, you didn't know what you were doing. Because look what it says. But it is from him, God, the Father, that you have your life in Christ Jesus. Because of him, you're saved. Because of him, you're alive. Because of him, you're not going to hell. Because of him, you've got eternity to live with him throughout eternity. He loves you so much. He's run out there like the Father's Son and greeted you and got you and brought you and going to bring you home one day. Woo! <laughs> Just let it soak into the fiber of your being. If nobody was here but one person, Willie, Everybody else is gone. Let's just say. God picked Willie. Then you all show up. He picks each one. Picks each one. Personally, he came to each one of us. I remember the day of my conversion. I don't know why I got out of the chair. I'm going forward. 
Because of him, I have my life in Christ Jesus. What am I and what are you that God is mindful of you to choose you from before the foundation of the world to be his? God's great love. (coughs) Wow. Let's turn to another scripture here. I don't have but a few of them. <laughs> I just popped out a few, you know. <laughs> I'll let you go at midnight. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at Romans 8.1. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hold, hold your position. Hold your position. Let's go to finish that one. Let's finish that one on 30. Verse 30. I'm sorry. Did I finish that? Yeah, I finished that. Okay, 31. There we go. What then shall we say to all this? <laughs> God is for us. Say, God is for me. Folks, the war is over. The battle's over. Got good news for you. God is for you. Not against you. Woo! That's shouting time. Who can be against us? Who can be against me? Who can be against you? You don't have to prove yourself to God. He chose you. He picked you out. Because of Him, you are in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> not your church membership, not your good works, your good looks. We're all good looking. We know that. We won't argue with that. No, because of Him, who can be our foe. If God is on our side, I want to get back to Romans. I'm, I'm sorry. I want to get back to First um, Corinthians thirty, verse thirty-one. Okay, my fault. I'm sure I'm messing it up, but this is exciting. First Corinthians. Chapter 1, verse 31. That's Romans 8, 31 there. That's good. I like that. That must have been the Lord putting that up there. You know, that was good, wasn't it? You know? So then, as it is written, let him who boasts and proudly rejoices and glories, boast and proudly rejoice in what you have done to bring your salvation. Huh? Proudly rejoice and glory in the Lord, because, it, uh, because of Him we are in Christ Jesus. Now think about it. God that created the universe. God said, let there be light. God, who we can't see, and yet we love Him. That's Scripture, by the way. Chose us. What is it to boast about? Say glory in the Lord. Lord. Take it in personally because that's, that's what he wants you to do, to see that, to know that. Sin has been taken care of. Sin shall not have dominion over us. All of the handwriting was nailed to the cross. You ought to read that in the Love Bible. Powerful. He took care of it all. How many is ever going out to eat and somebody pulls out their wallet Notice how this squeaks. Squeak! That means I hadn't opened it lately. And you got your tray there at um, OK Corral. All of you get in the line, 
And I whip out this little card right here. This is Brother Willie's card. I took it out of his pocket. <laughs> and because of him, you're going to eat. Come on, can you see the picture? Huh? I can see, I can see y'all. Woo! I take two of them over there. <laughs> See, because of Him we eat. Because of Him, God, we have been put in Christ. We are saved. We are His children. He's got a future for us. And if He be for us, who can be against us? See, when that gets in your spirit, you tell, you will, I mean, the devil will just, how many ever seen the roadrunner? That's the devil. He's gone, man. All right. So, as it is written, we just want to praise the Lord for what He's done. And He did it. Because why? Because He loves us so much that He gave His credit card to buy dinner for us. That's bringing it down on our level where we can understand it. So, I'm His son, you are His children. He's our Heavenly Father. He lives in us. By the way, the Bible says, which is our only hope in glory. That was a mystery that was hidden for many years. Christ in our heart, our only hope of glory. Nowhere else, nowhere else can one be saved other than through the name of Jesus Christ. All right, let's, let's look at another scripture here, which is very, very powerful. Uh, all right, we, we started with that uh, one on uh, Romans 8, 1. Let's look at that again. All right, Romans 8, 1 now. Here we go. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, no judging, guilty of wrong, for those who are what? In Christ. Are you in Christ? All right, let's settle it once and for all. No condemnation, no judging of being guilty or, or, or of wrong. You are in Christ. And how did you get in Christ? Huh? God puts you in Christ. You know, that's almost like a little baby trying to get in the crib. You can't get into the crib. So daddy comes along and puts you in the crib. Daddy comes along and puts us in Christ. Therefore, no judging. You're not guilty. All charges have been dropped. Nailed to the cross. And that old man that you've been trying to crucify for years died with Christ 2,000 years ago. And all we got to do is put him off if he acts up. That's easy. Well, my mind is going different ways there. I'm, going to, I'm, I'm moving on, uh, Willie. All right. For those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk, not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the Spirit. So we walk after the dictates of the Spirit and not of the flesh. If the flesh acts up, we know exactly how to handle it. We put him off. Put the old man off. That's simple. How do you do that, Brother Bob? Well, I'll just give you a little illustration of that. It's so easy. <coughs> this is my old man. Now he looks too good. He looks it looks too good to be the old man. Let's see what I got here. This is the old man right here. Now he starts acting up. What do I do? What do I do? Well, let's put him off.
put him off. Didn't I tell you you died at Calvary 2,000 years ago? Now get back to the grave where you belong. See, you be rough with him. Say, be rough with him. Huh? Oh, that was weak. Say, be rough with him. Oh, you're getting it now. Be rough with that critter. Don't let him have his way. All right, take your head off, R.W. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Now, let's find another scripture that along that line. All right, look at uh, Romans 8.2. 8.2. Boy, that's a good one. Now, we're talking about loving ourselves, but I'm trying to build us into Christ. Because if God can love us, why can't we love ourselves? See, it's in there. How many recognizes it when it sticks his head up? See, it's like, there it is. No, God loves me. You're not good enough. I beg your pardon. God chose me before the foundation of the world and put me in Christ. And therefore, there is no judging, there's no condemnation, there's no guilt. I'm free. To love him, to serve him. But say, you've got to talk to yourself. How many people in here talk to themselves? Let's see your hand. All right, you need to say the right thing. Because you see, really what happens is you draw the enemy powers. For years, we cast out spirits out of people. And they do good for a while. But they go back into that old same thinking again. I'm not this, and I'm not that. I'm just this. And I'm, I, 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 the devil comes right back and says, yeah, you're right. I missed you. <laughs> you got to remember that. You are in Christ. And as he is in the world, so are you. See, get that old brain renewed. All right, look at that scripture. For the law of the spirit of life, of life, of life, which is in Christ Jesus. There's a lot of things in Jesus in there. Go to bed tonight and say, thank you, Lord, I'm in Christ. You wake up in the morning and say, thank you, Lord, I'm in Christ. All through the day, thank you, Lord, I'm in Christ. And in Christ... There's everything I need to live a victorious life. We just have to break some of the old bad habits. All right, look what it says. The law of the, the new life, be, the new being, has freed me from the law of sin and of death. The war's over. And where is that law of the Spirit? Where can I find him? In Christ. And where can I find you? Very good. If I look for you, I know where to find you. Wow. Powerful. For the law of the Spirit of life, life which is in Christ Jesus, which is the law of our new being, has freed me from the law of sin and of death. Now, <clears throat> we're walking along and we're free from it all of a sudden, but all of a sudden you step on my toe. Let's say Willie steps on my toe and I say a bad word. What am I going to do? Huh? All right. First John 1, 9. Everybody say First John. One nine. Confess. Okay, confess. Now, do you understand God's faithful? He's just to do what? To beat you over the head. To condemn you. To what? To forgive you and do what? Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now you're back, you're back on the, the road. How many in here, you're driving down the road, 
Oh, how I love Jesus. We all know I could sing, did you? Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Boom! Flat tar. Mama, mama, mia. What are you going to do? Pull over to the side of the road. Take your gun out and shoot the car. What are you going to do? Take the spare tire. Would you know how to change a tire on the road? <laughs> Have you ever done it? Okay. But <laughs> it, if you haven't, what you got to do, you got to flip the back of the trunk, get the tire out, <laughs> and make sure it's got air in it. <laughs> and and you got to fix that thing. First John 1, 9, you get a new tar on there, throw the old other tar in the back, put the thing down, get in, crank it up, get back on the road, and keep on going. Keep on going. Now, if that particular thing is tricking you up, tricking you up a lot, let me tell you what you need to do. Two things you've got to remember. <coughs> There's two things. One, one is what we call legalism. How many have ever heard that word, legal, legalism? A legal person, okay, a legal person is, they'll shoot the scriptures at you like that. In other words, if you don't do exactly that, like that, you're out of here. I mean, you just, you, you, it, it, it's got to be just like that. No, no room for grace. You understand that? No room for grace, okay? And so they are very strict, very... And you go out, man, goodness, no, I'm, oh, oh, and the devil jumps on your back and beats you up. That's legalism. Let me know what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay. The other side of the coin is what we call liberalism. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, probably not. Liberalism, very liberal. What, it, what that is, a person <clears throat> knows about grace. But they know about grace as far as 1 John 1, 9 goes. So if they make a mistake or they have something that they're trying to overcome and they keep falling, they keep falling, they think, well, God will forgive me. So if I do it, God will forgive me. And he will forgive you. But their thinking is wrong. They don't understand that God has the grace to give you the power to overcome that sin where you don't have to, Pick 1 John 1, 9 all the time. But it's there if you need it. So in their mentality, they think, well, you know, God's grace is there. Uh, Paul brings this up in the book of Romans. Many people were uh, saying, well, you know, the more I sin, the more God uh, shows grace. And, and everybody really sees how gracious he is. And, uh, and so some people just say, well, God will forgive me. They don't realize that God's grace also enables us to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. Are, are, am I coming through? Okay. They don't have that teaching, and so they, 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 they in, a, in a sense, they frustrate the grace of God. You've heard that word in the Bible, frustrating the grace of God. Yes, God will forgive us, but he will also give us the grace to overcome that. But that's a process. Now, sometimes, I mean, you made it a week or two. I, I have had two or three years before I get the victory over one area. Of course, I know you guys probably like that, right? <laughs> okay, so don't be discouraged, but don't just say, well, God's grace is there. If I mess up, I'm covered. And that's true, but if you got that wrong attitude, that's the wrong attitude. You now need to believe and put your faith in God's grace that he will cause you to overcome that temper, uh, that judging, that big mouth, that uh, lust. Now, I'm not just talking about uh, lust of the flesh. I'm talking about going to belts and buying everything you see. Of course, there's nobody in here like that. And then pray to God that he'll help, help you out in your finances. Let's move on, Bob. I believe it will. <laughs> I 
How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Okay, that's very important to understand. So we don't want to be legalistic. Yes, if we do make a mistake, God's grace is there. And we can open our mouth, confess it, and God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. And where's that found? I forgot. Huh? Right. In Christ, we've been put in Christ, and Christ loves us. God the Father loves us. Let's go one more scripture, and the time's running out. Got one more minute. Let's see which I can find. All right, let's turn to Romans uh, 12, 5. This is a good one. Romans 12, 5. Now, I want you to take that, that uh, paper about loving yourself home and really read it and get something out of it. All right, here we go. Those who were full... There we go. So we, now, find out who we are. We, the body of Christ. When you read that, you'll find out we, we. Say, we, the body of Christ. Okay. Numerous as we are, talking about the body of Christ, are one body. Notice this. One body in what? In Christ. Now, I'm not, I, I don't bash other groups of people. But i got to be honest, and I love everybody. But I know some people are proud that they're Baptists. <laughs> I know some people are proud that they're not Baptists. <laughs> Come on, church. <laughs> there is only one body. That's the body of Christ, and all of God's people that are saved are in that one body. Now, we call this the shield of faith because you have to have a name because the world sees us as an organization. So you've got to have a name for the organization, but we're a nonprofit organization, so you've got to have a name. So we put the name as close as the biblical terminology as we can, shield of faith. <laughs> But we are all brothers and sisters in the Lord. And Lou says, so we, numerous as we are, are one body in Christ, the Messiah, and individually we are parts one of another. Oh, my goodness. Did you know you were a part of me? And I'm a part of you. Now we need to let that sink in. We're all in Christ. We're all one body. And by the way, that body has one head. And that's Jesus. Now I'm not being mean, but we've got to know the truth. And that's the truth. Because this is not the word of men. This is the word of God. And so, we look out for one another. I said we look out for one another. We are edified edifiers. We edify one another. Look at the scripture again. So we, numerous as we are, are one body in Christ, in Christ, the Messiah. And individually, we are parts, one of another, mutually dependent on one another. Do you think if you didn't have anything to eat, that we'd let you starve. We have an obligation to take care of one another, to edify one another, to love one another. Probably a good thing I've run out of time because <laughs> I could get in trouble here. <laughs> but it would be good trouble. I'm glad that I'm a part of you. 
When you hurt, I hurt. That's what the Bible says. When one of you hurt, we're so connected together that each one of us should hurt. If your little finger hurts, do you hurt all over? <laughs> huh? If your big toe hurts, let me see. Somebody come up here and take your shoe off. Let me step on it. Give us a demonstration. <laughs> Every part of you is going to hurt. <laughs> now, if we really understand that, our whole attitude towards one another, and many of us understand that. There's many people don't understand that in the body of Christ. Our whole attitude will be changed towards one another. When you prosper, I prosper. When you hurt, I hurt. When you are honored, I am honored. Has anybody in here ever experienced being jealous of a part of the body of Christ? Yeah. I had an experience with God one time. His finger came down from heaven. Shoom! Circumcised my heart. Took that jealousy right out. It's natural. Don't, don't run around with your head. If it's there, it's there. And if somebody's looking better than you are, it'll probably come to the surface. But, but what do you do? I'm dead indeed under jealousy, and I put it off, and I give it to one of the saints. <laughs> Am I coming through tonight? We're in Christ. Amen. Love you. God bless you. And drive carefully as you go home. If you need any prayer, come up. We'll be glad.